the all-new Specialized Crux is claimed to be the world's lightest gravel bike, boasting a claimed weight of 725 grams for a size 56 centimeter frame with complete builds coming down as low as 7.25 kilograms for the top flight, unbelievably expensive S-Works model. The new bike steps away completely from its cyclocross roots and is now billed as an uncompromisingly light gravel bike, which borrows a great deal of tech from the similarly feathery Specialized Athos road bike. Despite its low weight, the bike retains genuine real-world practicalities, with tyre clearances for up to 2.1-inch tyres on 650B wheels or 47mm on 700C wheels. The bike also sticks with a threaded bottom bracket shell and is even compatible with a dropper post. With clean lines, a simple frame and no mud guard or rack mounts, the bike stands apart from the specialised Diverge and, to quote the brand, is for those riders looking for gravel enlightenment. Very clever. Now, of course, it probably won't surprise you to hear that this tech comes at a fairly extraordinary premium with the top-end S-Works model, coming in at $12,000 for the complete bike, or £10,750. That is, by anyone's measure, a lot of money. For that, you get the top-end 12R all-singing, all-dancing layup in your frame set, a SRAMRED ETAP AXS Explore group set, Roval Terra CLX wheels, and just about every single lightweight carbon goodie you could ever want on a gravel bike. For those of you without bottomless pockets, the Pro, Expert and Comp builds use a slightly heavier layup, but do start off at £4,000 or $4,200. There is a whole bunch of really interesting tech that's gone into this bike, so I urge you to watch through to get the juicy scoop on everything about the new bike. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video like this, you'll get a notification. Now we're going to start things off with the frame set because ultimately that is really what makes this bike. You may well recognise a lot of the design cues and the overall shape of the bike is very very similar to the Specialised Athos which launched last year. Compared to the vast majority of modern carbon bikes, the overall look of these two bikes is very very organic with each kind of tube flowing very smoothly into the other and quite gentle kind of shaping around the head tube and other main junctions. Now the reason for these shapes is not just aesthetic, and Specialized claims the way in which it has designed and formed these tubes allow it to use much longer lengths of carbon over those main junctions. And in doing so, they manage to do away with the stiffening layers you typically need when tubes meet at harsher angles. Now all of this adds up to a claimed reduction of 150 grams of composite weight. So that is just weight that has been dropped by being more efficient, essentially, in their use of carbon. To go back to the start of this video, all of this adds up to a frame which is claimed to weigh just 725 grams in its lightest paint option without the hardware. To put that into context, that is only 165 grams heavier than the Athos, which is pretty remarkable when you consider this Crux is rated for the gnarliest gravel riding you can imagine. It really does stack up as one of the lightest gravel frames on the market, and to pair that with genuinely impressive clearances for the tyres is quite a special combination. For those of you that are wondering, the bike also has a fairly conventional 125 kilogram maximum rider weight, though it is important to note that some of the components spec on the complete bike have a maximum rider limit of 109 kilos. Nonetheless, this is clearly a bike that is designed for real-world use. There's no real compromises in terms of where you can ride it or who can ride it. And again, that is impressive for a bike so light. The 10R frame, which is used on the Pro, Expert and Comp models, weighs 825 grams in a similar setup. Adding just that 100 grams makes the second tier frame, according to Specialized, still one of the lightest gravel frames on the market. 
The same fork is shared across all of the bikes, and that's a 12-hour layup one which is claimed to weigh around 400 grams when trimmed down to suit a 56 centimeter bike. Elsewhere, the frame has been slimmed down as much as possible with lots of small details, including trimming down the through axles, a super lightweight seat clamp, all that kind of good stuff you'd expect. Now, a 2.1 inch tire on a gravel bike, bearing in mind though that is with 650B wheels, is a pretty chunky tire clearance by anyone's measure. And in fact, the crux matches the diverge in terms of tire clearance on the whole. Now, a key marketing claim of the new bike is for its very low weight, the crux does boast pretty generous tire clearances, and it does. 2.1 inch tire on a 650B wheel is pretty chunky by most people's standards. Taking both of these factors into consideration, Specialized has produced what it is calling, and I'm not joking, its tire to clearance ratio graph, which you can see now. Now, I did a fairly intense eye roll when I first saw this, but to give credit where it is due, Specialized makes these claims with its tongue firmly planted in its marketing cheek, pointing out that, yes, of course, what we need is another way for which to compare bikes and a new market standard with which we measure them. Now, if you leave your cynicism aside, it is a quite interesting way to compare the bike, and it is a good way to illustrate where it sits within the market. In a similar vein to the Athos, the new Crux is designed to use a standard two-piece cockpit with a stem and handlebar, just like it used to be in the good old days. Now, with this layout, it foregoes the kind of wonderful cableless integration that we see quite often now on go-fast gravel bikes. But for those of you who actually like maintaining their bikes, I'm sure you will be breathing a sigh of relief. The Crux is primarily designed to work with one-by drivetrains, and every bike in the complete range is specced with a variation of a SRAM one-by drivetrain. Now, the bike is actually compatible with front derailleurs, but it will not work with mechanical front derailleurs. With this bike, you are limited to pretty much Shimano GRX or any of SRAM's ETAP derailleurs. There are further limitations in terms of the crank sets you can run, but we're going to come on to that in a little bit. For the shred-ready gravel riders amongst you, you will be delighted to hear that the bike is compatible with any 27.2mm dropper seat post and that does include mechanically actuated, internally rooted dropper posts. Finally, the bike has provision to mount three water bottles, two in your standard place and one on the bottom of the down tube towards the bottom bracket shell. And that's it. There's no rack mount, there's no mudguard mount, there's not even the little top tube bag mount we often see on gravel bikes these days. The geometry of the new Crux is broadly similar to the outgoing Crux, which, if you remember, was a cyclocross bike. Though, as a cyclocross bike, it was a bit of an outlier, as it was very low and slack in the first place. There are, however, a few very small tweaks with the new bike. And to start, it probably won't surprise you to hear, the reach has grown by roughly 10mm across the board. Increasing reach allows you to reduce your stem length while maintaining the same overall fit as before. However, with a longer reach and a shorter stem, your weight is more biased towards the rear of the bike, which improves handling in steep terrain. Finally, the bottom bracket drop has been increased. However, if you look at the bottom bracket height as a whole, it's actually almost exactly the same between the two bikes. This is because when specced with fatter tyres on the new bike compared to the 33mm maximum tyre width permitted for cyclocross bikes, you end up with them roughly at the same height overall. This does mean that if you want to ride the bike as a cyclocross bike, and we will talk about that a little bit more in a minute, does mean you're going to have a quite low bottom bracket height, which, if you're a very, very good cyclocross racer and you like popping the barriers, could be a problem. The original Crux was introduced way back in 2010, and at that time, it was very, very much designed as a cyclocross bike. The new Crux makes a clean break with cyclocross specificity, and Specialized will no longer offer the bike in a cyclocross-specific build. The reason for this isn't exactly surprising, and essentially, the market for cyclocross-specific bikes is vanishingly small compared to gravel bikes, which by many brands' measures is now their biggest category overall. 
If you're looking at the new Crux and thinking, that's the cross bike for me, you will be pleased to hear the bike is UCI approved. And indeed, specialized sponsored cyclocross riders will be racing this new bike in cyclocross events going forward. Now finally, we come on to the price and $12,000, my goodness gracious, Specialized certainly isn't the only brand out there to be offering a five-figure gravel bike. $12,000 or £10,750 definitely raised an eyebrow when I first saw it. Now at the lower end, it is still fairly expensive for a gravel bike, but you can get a new Crux for £4,000 or $4,200. With that build, you're getting a SRAM Rival 1x group set, a pair of perfectly nice alloy wheels and some alloy finishing kit. If you want the full specs and details of each of these bikes, head to bikerader.com, and of course, there's a link in the video description to get the full scoop on each one of these builds. Now, on to my first ride impressions for the new Specialized Crux. I was invited out to Flanders, where I did manage to catch a bit of the world champs racing, and in between scoffing freets and chugging Trappist Monk beers, I did manage to get a couple days on the new bike. I should stress, I really haven't done a massive amount of riding on this, so these really are first ride impressions, and we will of course follow up with a full review in the months to come on BikeRadar.com. Now it won't surprise you to hear that the immediate impression when riding this bike is its lightness. As we've said many, many times before, ultimately weight is somewhat overstated when it comes to bikes, and really, aero is ultimately what matters if what you care about is going fast. However, while Aero might be the fastest, a lightweight bike always feels fast. And I would argue that on gravel, where your speeds are typically lower and you might be climbing some more technical steep terrain, the difference is actually a bit more marked than when on the road. And that was my overriding impression of the bike. When you are climbing those beautiful steep cobbled bergs, it really is an effortless bike to ride up there. And I mashed my little pale legs as hard as I possibly could to drop the collective cycling Illuminati who were also on that launch. As well as being light enough to make it worthwhile boasting about to your friends, and don't pretend for a second you buy a lightweight bike for any other reason, the low overall weight contributes to quite a feathery feeling when you are climbing technical terrain. With barely anything beneath you, lifting up the rear end, hopping over obstacles, really is quite effortless on the Crux. On faster terrain and the descent, the bike is very predictable and calm. It doesn't have any kind of vague noodliness from that lightweight, and it is overall actually quite a stiff bike. And when you're rattling along at high speeds around corners, it doesn't feel difficult to rein everything in. Another thing that really struck me about the bike is just how quiet it is. Now obviously we're riding a wireless group set here, so we've basically half the number of cables that are running through the frame. But there's something about the overall tube shapes where they're slightly less cavernous than on some gravel bikes that it doesn't sort of resonate and amplify sounds when you're on rougher terrain. In terms of the build, and you would certainly hope I would say this, but there really is very little to be desired with the bike. This was my first time on SRAM's Explore group set, and the overall range in the cassettes and the steps between the gears struck me as very good. My colleagues have said broadly the same thing, and I do have to agree that it feels like a very well thought out system. The overall ergonomics of ETAP continue to impress me, with those two separate shifters going up or down, and I still really, really like that. It's so simple to work out when you are rattling your brains out on a gravelly, cobbled descent. And it's just a really, really simple way of approaching shifting. On to the wheels, and to be honest, I don't really have an overriding impression of the Roval wheels. They're very nice, very expensive, very lightweight gravel wheels, and I'm sure they'd be great if I owned them. But more testing is required for me to really develop some kind of hot opinion on those. One thing I can comment on is the Specialized Pathfinder Pro tires. Now, in the dusty, dry, beautiful conditions that we were treated to around outer Leuven's finest bergs, these were absolutely fine. They've got a raised, pretty much entirely smooth center tread and just enough tread on the outside to really help in the corners. However, 
As I said in my review of the Diverge last year, the Pathfinder is pretty much useless in UK gravel, and if I had one of these bikes back in the UK, or if I just rode in wet conditions, it'd be one of the first things I would change. On the road, and this is a really interesting point on this bike, the bike is great, it's very lightweight, it handles in a nice way, it's reactive enough for the kind of riding I'm doing. And when you compare it to the Athos, and you consider how little difference there is between the two of these in terms of weight, I did kind of find myself wondering why you would bother buying the Athos. This is pretty much a gravel Athos where you could put 28mm tires on this, or 30mm if you're progressive, and have a really nice road bike. Sure, the handling won't be quite as responsive and fast as a proper road bike, but if what you care about is weight, and that's absolutely fine, even if aero is more important, I mean, why would you buy the Athos? Now, if we look at the Crux as a gravel bike, which, by the way, it is, it kind of poses some quite interesting questions about what it is and who it's for. If we compare the bike to something like the Diverge, which has rack mounts, bolt cage mounts, front pannier racks, the whole works, then we look at the Crux, which basically has three bottle cages and nothing else, you kind of wonder, what is it actually designed for? If we take it as a gravel race bike, like of course it's going to be absolutely fine, and you could ride very, very fast on this bike for long distances. But if all you're interested in is going very fast on a gravel race, then a more aero bike like the 3T Explorer or the Cannondale Super 6 Evo CX might be a better option overall. If you bought a Crux, I have no doubt that it's only the limits of your imagination which will stop you from doing things on this bike. It's clearly going to be a lovely thing to own, even if it isn't the most rational decision in the world, because it is a wonderful piece of tech. It's really impressive and specialised, have done something quite special with the bike. But what do you think? Is the Crux the perfect gravel bike for you? Do you appreciate that stripped back approach? Leave your thoughts in the comments. Now there's quite a lot more on the Crux which you can read about on bikeradar.com and again we'll have a link for that in the video description. If you do have any questions about the new bike in the meantime, leave those in the comments. I do always check them and I'll do my best to reply. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe, click the little bell icon so every time we upload a video like this, you'll get a notification.